Hi, welcome to episode 240 of the Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the Corner of Knit and Tea.com, which is where this show's episode notes and every show's episode notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called the Corner of Knit and Tea, and we have a Ravelry group called the Corner of Knit and Tea. Hi, how are you? It is Monday, August 5th, and that is the fifth time I have recorded my intro because I am tired and just a little bit under the weather today, and uh, for some reason getting that first part done was hard. I hope that you are having a lovely week and that you had a great weekend. I did. I just came back from Stitches Midwest. And I will let you know that this episode will be fairly short because I have almost no crafting to show you. So let's talk about that. This week, um, I believe I am getting a cold. My throat's a little scratchy um, and my nose is a little stuffy and I took some allergy medication and that didn't seem to help. Um, so I'm blaming the plane ride because that's usually what happens. And of course, I don't leave home very often anymore um, because I mostly work from home. So I feel like when I go anywhere, um, I come down with something. So I am drinking um, in my Hershey's mug from the Hershey, Pennsylvania, where we went to the Hershey factory. Um, I went ahead and put sort of um, a little hot toddy minus the alcohol in here. <laughs> it is Lipton black tea and then it is lemon juice and honey. Um, and so I am just sipping on that today because like I said, my throat is a little scratchy. So that's nothing super special. I actually had a fresh lemon in my fridge. Usually we have, you know, the store-bought concentrated lemon juice, but I actually had a fresh lemon in my fridge. So I um, took a wedge of it and put it in there and it's really good. So let's talk about things. Um, so normally here is where I would talk about knitting and spinning. And for knitting, I have been working on a sample knit that I can't show you. And I have been working on a uh, design of my own that I would show you, except it's um, almost completely ripped out. I did knit a lot this weekend. And I won't say that it's a waste because I um, figured a lot of things out. Um, designing is hard, y'all. <laughs> I pick up a pattern and knit it no problem, but when it's my choice to, um, you know, figure out what it is that I'm going to do, and particularly since I don't want to just copy someone else's, uh, there are a lot of decisions to be made. And I got maybe half, a third to a halfway through the knitting and decided that there were enough things that I wanted to change that it was just time to pull it out. Um, so I dithered about it for about 24 hours, and then last night when we were at the airport, I just pulled it out. So this one is all the way back. I had used probably two-thirds of this skein. Um, and then this one I am working on pulling right now. This was the first part. I will show you the first thing um, that bothered me about it, which is if you start a crescent shawl and you start it with a small number of stitches, um, you get that telltale hump in the middle. You can see that it kind of has this little hump here, and then if I try and pull it out to block it, it gets kind of squirrely there. So the next draft of the pattern will fix that. Um, this is going to be a shawl pattern for a newsletter, so you'll be able to get it for free if you sign up for the newsletter, um, and that will probably be in September or October. The yarn that I am using is Monostel Uruguay Alma, which is a fingering weight single. It's one of their new bases, um, and it is a super light fingering weight because I believe it is 530 yards or so. Let me see, 546 yards of 500 meters per skein. And like I said, that is Monos del Uruguay Alma. So the yarn is lovely. And although it is a fairly delicate single and I was a little bit worried about it, it does stand up to ripping. So that part is really good. I just have to rip this back out tonight. Um, and then I'm gonna start a spreadsheet and make a few changes and cast back on. So um, I debated not podcasting at all because I really have nothing to show you um, for my efforts, except, you know, like a little bit of knitting and yarn balled up again. Um, but I decided just to uh, tell you what I was up to. So um, we went up to Stitches Midwest on the 31st. We flew up on the 31st of July and I was there the first through the fourth, flew home yesterday. Um, and so I knit a lot while I was away and I have nothing to show you. And um, I don't like it. <laughs> The reason that I have, well, there are plenty of reasons why I have not become a prolific designer. And part of it is that I hate ripping, um, but I am willing to rip if it's not looking right. And this was not looking right. So that is what I'm doing there. 
Um, the only other thing I have to show you, and this is not new either, but I can show it to you, is this is the skein that I finished um, for my last skein for Tour de Fleece. This is the um, Migration colorway from Hello Yarn. It is yellows and greens and browns, and it is squishy. It is probably a DK weight, um, and like I said, I think I got 230 to 250 yards. The last time I couldn't show you because I had stuck it in a bath right before I podcasted, um, so I decided to just bring it today. So let's talk about the rest of what is going on. So Stitches Midwest is held in Chicago every year, or it's actually held in the suburbs um, outside Chicago, which is Schaumburg. Um, and I decided I wanted to go this year for a couple reasons. First of all, I just wanted to go. And second of all, um, I got asked if I would help out in someone's booth. So um, a friend and I, her name is Beth, um, she is in my uh, local knitting group, she and I decided to go ahead and make a weekend of it. So we flew up to Chicago on Wednesday evening and we got in just before dinner time and went and found us ourselves some place to eat. Um, the hotel was very nice and within walking distance there was a great pancake place and then a great tavern and so we ate at both um, throughout the weekend. Not entirely, but, um, but we ate there multiple times. Um, Thursday morning I was going to be helping with booth setup and uh, Beth was taking a class and um, I didn't have to be in until 11 and my sister brought the kids out for breakfast and so we went to the pancake place and I got to see the kids and that was great. I have not seen them as much this year as I would like because I've been doing so much other traveling that I have found it hard to get away for a weekend to go up and play with them. So I really need to do that and I also really need to do their winter sweaters. They are growing and um, Roxy is going to be starting kindergarten this fall and uh, Miles is getting more words and is a little chatterbox and um, a pretty happy little guy. So um, we had a, I had a great time seeing them and I was grateful to my sister for bringing them out. I think I was, I think I was about 45 minutes from where she was um, and they do have a car so she was able to drive out and so that was really wonderful. Um, Thursday I helped set up the booth that I was working in, which was Zen Yarn Garden, and they have beautiful yarns. They are a hand dyer out of Canada, and they have a variety of weights of yarn, um, and so they just produced a pattern collection this spring, which I helped tech edit. And so I helped them set up their booth, although I have to say it was pretty easy. They um, brought a lot of things already prearranged in bins, so we just had to set out the bins and then kind of fill in around them. Um, so that was easy. I got done with that in about an hour. And then um, my good friend Christine, who is also in my knitting group here, and she runs Treasure Goddess Yarns, uh, she was actually in the booth across the way from us. And so then I helped her do some setup. Um, and then Beth and I uh, went out to dinner. Friday morning started the show, which was, oh, I take it back. Thursday night from five to eight, there was a preview in the marketplace. I did not have to work it, but I did wander through and I did make some purchases. Um, I brought home a ton of yarn with me and not all of it was purchases. I'm gonna show you um, a good chunk of it today. There's a little bit more, but I think I'll just show you that when I start knitting it up. Um, basically, I purchased some things at the market and then I had some things given to me and a few things followed me home. They're going to be turned into samples and um, then I'm going to send them back. So I will sort of go through that. Um, the first thing that I purchased on Thursday night at the market was this great bag from Erin Lane Bags. She produces really, really affordable, beautifully made bags. Um, and this is the nope sheep in a uh, unicorn costume. And um, I just thought it was hysterical. This is her sweater size bag and is $25. It is a drawstring bag. It is currently holding, I believe, uh, close to, I think it's holding 10 skeins right now plus a few other things um, so it is a nice big bag I actually have another of her bags and I really like it they um, are lined there is not interfacing but it is kind of um, a stiffer fabric um, so the bag won't stand up by itself but it won't completely collapse on itself so now I'm gonna um, remove the things and talk through what I got um, one of the things I was super excited about getting to go see um, was there is a yarn dyer who I bought a couple skeins of yarn from um, back when I went to Rhinebeck in uh, 2015, I think, 2016. I can't even remember. I'd have to look back. 
Um, and they were kind of just, um, they had been selling Angora and um, some hand spun yarns, but they were just kind of getting into dyeing yarns. And their name was Cozy Color Works. And I followed them on Instagram and kept checking their shop. And slowly they have grown over the years. Um, so they have more in their shop now. But I have not been to a festival that they have been at until this weekend. So I was super excited to go see their booth. And they have, um, they have the soft the softest bases that I have ever used. Um, all of their bases, or most of their bases, are 100% superwash merino. Their worsted is just super squishy, and um, their fingering base is just super soft. It's a light fingering weight. Um, and they do they do speckle dyeing, um, but it doesn't look like everyone else's. Um, it's real subtle speckles. Uh, I knit a hat from the yarn I got from them, and then actually I knit another hat for my sister. Um, but this time I fell in love with this. This is Cozy Colored Works. It's their hand-dyed superwash merino, approximately 550 yards. It's a light fingering weight, and this is the colorway Northern Lights. This is a super dark gray with um, streaks of magenta and kind of a um, acidy green. It's just gorgeous. And I am hoping to knit a sweater with it. I got four skeins, um, which gives me over 2000 yards to work with. I am still currently working on a boxy, so I don't think it will be a boxy, but I went through um, Ravelry and looked up some fingering weight sweaters. I want something that's super simple, um, but I think this will be a lightweight, gorgeous sweater. I guess it's really hard to see. Um, I have some pictures on Instagram and I'll take more pictures because it is really hard to see all the subtle color in there. Um, but I am super, super excited about this one. So these two were my first major purchases. That was on um, Thursday night at the market preview. And um, the remainder of my purchases I actually made on Saturday. So the only thing, and I can't remember if I told you this before I went, the only thing I specifically went to Stitches looking for was I wanted to get a skein of sock yarn with a contrasting um, mini skein for heels and toes and cuffs. Um, and that is because I want to knit the Coffee Talk pattern by Tracy Miller. She is um, one of the grocery girls. And it was on my Make 9 this year. And so I thought, oh, I really want to do that. And I have a bazillion skeins of sock yarn in the stash. So I'm sure it would have been easier for me to just buy a contrasting mini. Um, but I really wanted to get a sock set. I have only worked with one sock set before. Um, and so I really wanted to get one. And um, the Yarn Birds yarn truck was at Stitches Midwest. They are an actual like RV camper that has been converted into a yarn store. And technically what I bought was from outside the truck, um, but they had a whole rack of Hue Loco and they had the backyard chicken collection. And so that is what I got. The skein that I got is, um, it's Phyllis Sock. It's 75 uh, Superwash Merino, 25 percent nylon and it is a 100 gram skein with 460 yards and two 20 gram minis and this is called speckled sussex so this is um it's, it comes with a brown and peach and then it's a skein of um kind of peach and some turquoise and some brown and so that is what i am going to do my um coffee talk socks out of and my plan is to use the brown mini for mine and then if i have leftovers i will go ahead and um make socks for the kids and I'll use this kind of peachy pinky mini um, or I'll just find something else in the stash. So that was like the one thing that I went to Stitches um, with on my list um, and so I came home with that. Um, the final thing that I bought at uh, Stitches Midwest was we were diagonally across from uh, Signature Needle Arts. And for those of you who have tried Signature Needle Arts, they are beautiful, beautiful needles. They are incredibly expensive. They are, for the most part, out of my price range. I do have a set of US1 2.25 DPNs that I have used for socks for a really, really long time, um, and they are my favorite sock knitting needles. So I decided that I would go ahead and splurge on one fixed or one circular needle. Um, the way that signature needles are sold now is they are sold with tips and then interchangeable cables, meaning you can buy one size of tips and multiple lengths of cables to use with it. Um, the one trick with signature is that the cables are all specifically sized for the needles. So for instance, for a set of US six tips, I could have anything from a six inch or sorry, anything from a 16 inch to I think a 40 inch and possibly more than that cable. Um, and I could switch the tips between all of those cables, um, but I can't use a size six needle cable for a size seven needle. 
So I hope that explains kind of how they do it. So it is interchangeable, but it is a big investment. What I decided was that I would let myself get one needle. So I got one needle from a Signature Needle Arts. And what I got was a size six needle because those are um, the most, that is the size I use the most. Um, so here are the tips and I have not actually even put them into the cable yet, but I do have the cable here. I got a 32 inch cable because um, I was debating between 32 and 40 and I couldn't quite decide what it was that I wanted to do, but I decided to go ahead and do um, 32 inches. I find 32 inches is useful because you can either magic loop with it or it is perfect for a sweater so or a shawl. And primarily what I knit is... Um, like I said, sweaters or worsted weight shawls. So this is my um, splurge for myself, um, my new needle set. And actually I had been knitting um, the shawl, my shawl design on my Addies. And so I decided I'm going to recast on, on my signature. So that is what I bought at the show. Um, I came home with a few more things. And so I thought I would show them to you now, and you'll also see them as I use them, which should be in the next month or two. Um, I need, was asked to design a hat pattern for September, and so I decided um, while I was away, I kind of came up with a brainstorm or a flash of inspiration, as I called it. Um, basically, I had trouble sleeping the first night, and all of a sudden I came up with an idea for what I should do. Um, I have been excited to knit hats for Hat Not Hate, um, and they just finished their collection for this year, um, but they are constantly looking to collect more hats. And so I decided that I would design a pattern that could be used to knit a hat for Hat Not Hate or for another charity of your choice. Um, but because I specifically wanted to focus on Hat Not Hate, I picked up a skein of beautiful blue yarn from a Treasure Goddess Yarns. That is my friend Christine. It is her Treasured Warmth Worsted Yarn. I have used this before to knit a sweater for Roxy. It is 200 meters, 100% superwash merino wool, 218 yards, 100 grams, and the colorway is called Swimming with the Fishies, and it is this bright, beautiful blue. So you will see me cast on for that in the next week or two. Um, uh, Treasure Goddess is the yarn pirate, and uh, she has all kinds of fun accessories, as well as some beautiful yarns. So I would encourage you to um, check her out. And she generously offered um, yarn support for my pattern. Um, so I have this one to work on. Um, I did work in the Zen Yarn Garden booth, and as you know, I have both sample knit for Zen Yarn Garden and I have knit um, some of my own things and reviewed their yarns. Their yarns are absolutely beautiful. I learned more about them this weekend. They um, custom mill their yarn in Italy to get uh, the finest micron counts um, so that they can produce beautiful, beautiful soft yarns. They have a superwash merino they, uh, that I have used and loved, and then they also have um, a base that they call Serenity. And, um, oh, that's actually super fine, but this, the other two are Serenity, um, and they are 70% merino, super fine, super wash merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. And um, they dye them in all kinds of fun colorways. These are mostly numbered, um, I think, because um, they do have some repeatable colorways, but they also do some um, one-offs, and so I'm not exactly sure um, what, they didn't come with names, they just came with letters and numbers, so I can't tell you. Um, but I wore my, um, um, Love You Baby, which was a three color brioche shawl designed by Sosu Knits, um, who is Suzanne Summer. It was specifically designed um, for a knit along, a summer knit along for the store Do You Knit in um, New Jersey. And they knit it in hedgehog fibers. But at one point I got three skeins of Zen Yarn Garden and I knit myself this great brioche shawl. Um, it is brioche, it is garter stitch, it is textured stitches. I will put a link to it in my show notes. And I brought it with me this weekend to wear in the booth because since I was in Zen Yarn Garden's booth selling their yarns, I thought it would be great to wear shawls that I made out of their, well, and I have two shawls that I made out of their projects. And that was one of them. And I got a ton of questions and um, Roxanne and I decided that I should knit one up for um, Roxanne's the owner of Zen Yarn Garden. And we decided that I should knit one up. And so then we had a great time. You will see on uh, my Instagram, I posted a whole bunch of color bundles, which look like these big buns. And uh, basically we just twisted multiple skeins together that went together. And I had a great time picking them out because one of the things um, that is really neat about Zen Yarn Garden, but also makes it hard to order online, is their yarns have so much saturated, beautiful color to them. 
Um, and they, a lot of them are multicolored, well, mo almost all of them are multicolored skeins. They do have some semi-solids, um, but she makes really, really stunning saturated skeins. And the deal is that online, I can't necessarily tell which skeins go together because it may be slightly different shades of blue or pink or whatever. And so it's really hard to find three that go together. So we made up a whole bunch of bundles and Roxanne kept asking me what I liked. And I kept saying, what do you want to display in your booth? And she decided she wanted a pop of color in her booth. So these these are the three skeins that she selected um, and I am going to be working on that in as soon as I finish my current samples I'm going to be working on this one. So the first skein is kind of a brown and turquoise and then it's got magenta flashes and a lot of white so it'll be a very kind of speckled um, and then the second skein is this bright fuchsia and red so this is just really really going to pop next to this one um, and then for a contrast the third skein is kind of blues and greens. Now these may not be colored that you would normally put together. I'm not sure I would put them together um, specifically for my, um, like what I would knit, but um, we did it to kind of show you the depth and breadth of um, Zen Yarn Gardens. And we had plenty of other bundles. Uh, again, if you look on my Instagram, we put together a whole bunch of bundles in the same color families. Um, and if you're interested in doing a shawl, I would suggest um, Zen also has a list of their retailers, so you can maybe find a retailer close to you who carries Zen, so you can go ahead and match up your own, or you can check out the website and see what you can come up with. But that is what I will be knitting shortly. So um, even though I am not showing you much in terms of my current knits, these are the next two things that will be on my needles and the kids' sweaters. Um, finally, I just have a few lovely gifts. Um, this was a cute little pouch, and I confess I do not know which store it came from. Um, Beth, um, who I went with, she was running around shopping, and so she brought me these, they're these little zombie pouches. They're really cute, and this says, I got 99 problems, but a stitch ain't one. And so I think I'll use it for stitch markers or notions or um, something of that sort, maybe in my travel bag, because um, that would be great for that. And then the final thing that I got, and I have to say, well, okay, I should start by saying... I did get to meet several viewers of the podcast this weekend. Um, thank you for coming and saying hi. I met a lot of you in the booth and it was really, really nice to see you and put faces with names. And um, I appreciate that you stopped by to say hi. I hope you had a wonderful time and did lots of shopping. Um, one particular uh, friend stopped by. She and I have corresponded, um, but we have never actually met in person. And that is Benita. And she has the Fiber Pusher podcast. And she brought me this amazing hand spun skein. This is a skein of all CVM sheep, and it is four ply, and it is four different colors. So it is a white, a um, pale tan, a darker brown, and then a kind of mocha color. And um, it is a four ply of all these different sheep, because um, she processes fleeces in small batches. And she also brought me some uh, fun safety pin of stitch markers. So thank you, Benita. It was delightful to meet you, um, and I really, you really didn't need to bring me anything, um, but it's very sweet, and I will enjoy Enjoy it. I'm thinking maybe a squishy hat. So this one's a little bit short, but that was my trip to Stitches. Um, my friend Beth took two classes and she said she really enjoyed both classes and she was a little um, apprehensive about, you know, whether the classes would be good, whether she'd learn the technique. She took a um, lear uh, learning to knit brioche and then she also took a Fair Isle class. And so um, the classes were good. The vendor market was, um, it could have been busier, but it was great. And they had a wide variety of vendors. Um, there were probably a couple hundred vendors there. And everyone from, like I said, Yarnbirds to Stephen B came. Um, a homespun house was there. Um, beautiful sister who makes beautiful project bags. Um, there were so many people there and so many uh, businesses that I'd never gotten to see before. Um, and it was, it was really hard to actually limit myself to what I did bring home, um, particularly the things that I bought, because um, I had a budget and I didn't want to go crazy over it. Um, but I also wanted to buy things from some vendors I'd seen before and some new people. So I was really happy to get to do that. And um, if you are near Chicago, I would suggest it. It's usually uh, the first full weekend in August and um, in Schaumburg, that is right outside of Chicago. So that is what I have for you today. I really, really hope by next week I have some knitting progress to show you. Um, I'm really gonna buckle down. I need to work on that, that sample that I can't show you, but I'm really gonna buckle down and work on the shawl this week. And I think I'm gonna open some stitch pattern dictionaries and see um, what I can do about working on a hat too.
So, and both of those patterns will be free. I will announce where you can get them um, when they are ready and go live, um, but you'll be able to get both of them for free. So, that is all I've got for you this week. I hope that you had a wonderful week and possibly more productive than I did, or at least you've got a little more to show for it. Um, and until I see you next week, I will say happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>